Hi, my name is Carl, and I'm a solutions consultant for Amazon Web Services with Computer Doctors of Maine Inc., also known as TechBento. This tutorial is going to show you how to set up an Amazon EC2 instance that runs bind DNS and is a slave for Zerigo's DNS services. The reason we want to do this is we want to be able to create a second DNS server that you control that um, takes advantage of the Zerigo's robust set of features and allows you to use Zerigo as the primary uh, DNS carrier for your domains. Now, what preempted all this is uh, just about a week ago, Zerigo had a massive attack, a DDoS attack, that crippled their services for anywhere from 8 to 12 hours, and uh, everyone, is, everyone that uses their services was down entirely, mail, websites, everything. And uh, this obviously caused a little bit of outrage, a little bit of lessons learned, and everything else, but um, most people could have actually prevented this if they had their own DNS systems in place. Zerigo provides a hugely robust API, uh, lots of awesome features. You can't get them with uh, other services. In fact, a lot of companies uh, on the Twitter feeds posted that they're going to Amazon Route 3 or Route 53 uh, to switch over. Well, that's great, except if you're not if you're using the redirects or the APIs, you sort of lose a lot of that. Um, so not necessarily the best way to go. Uh, I obviously was one of those affected, and uh, I should have known better, but here we go. So this is how we're going to do this. Uh, you obviously need an Amazon EC2 account. Uh, you need to be able to run uh, at least a micro instance and potentially much larger. You need to have basic work working knowledge of Amazon Web Services. You also uh, need to know what glue records are and how to set them up. I find easiest to set those with network solutions. That is where my glue records exist. Uh, if you don't know what those are, we're going to ignore that uh, during this tutorial, but it is something that's critical in you having your own DNS server. They, uh, among many things, they prevent um, sort of uh, circular checking of a DNS. Nevertheless, that's on your own time. Here we're all about getting this machine going and talking to Zerigo. First things first, you need to have a security group dedicated to DNS. I created one on one of the first, I think, four attempts to try to make this video and had things go wrong. Uh, but basically, uh, call that group DNS, open up SSH port 22, open up TCP port 53, and open up TCP port 10,000, which is for webmin. We're going to be using that as a GUI. I'm a fan of GUIs, and I like to use them. I don't like using terminal if I don't have to. Uh, lastly, you absolutely need a port 53 UDP open. That is what DNS actually does all of its queries on. If you don't have it open, none of this is going to work. Once you're good with that, we're going to launch an Amazon instance. Uh, this is pretty simple. We're using an Amazon Linux AMI machine, 64-bit. And I'm going to do a, a micro instance for this particular need. Note that there's a difference between micro instances and how they can be used versus all the others. They cannot be used in a VPC, which comes in real handy when it comes to applying elastic IPs. I'll go into that in a little bit, but in this case, I'm doing a micro. Once the machine is initialized, I like to give it an elastic IP. I'm pretty sure you'll be doing the same thing. I'm associating an IP address that I've already created an outside DNS record for, and that I'll actually be using to connect to all of these things. And um, an important note here is that for the purposes of this demo, my DNS record is with a domain that is managed by Zerigo. Ideally, you would not want to do that, uh, because if Zerigo has a problem, obviously you can't look up yourself using your own DNS server. So um, in order to avoid that, I would recommend using a, another provider for that piece. But here, we're just using it for the demo purposes. Also, Elastic IPs go away. Uh, they're detached, disassociated from the machine when the machine is brought down. And then uh, when you power it back on, you have to associate it manually again. This is important if you plan to run this machine only during emergencies. It's either a step you have to do, or you have to account for it in some way or fashion. Now I must apologize, apparently I'm working with an incredibly buggy version of ScreenFlow and I just did an update midstream here, but uh, I've lost a bunch of these recordings as a result, so I'm just going to talk you through what just happened. Um, the Amazon EC2 machine was brought up and it fired up. Next step was to connect to it via SSH, which you have to do to install some core components. So you do the SSH command, provide your key, and put in its address and it will connect you. If you don't know how to do this, then simply look up the documentation. You know, it, you, you need to know how to do this kind of stuff to be able to work with this kind of system. Uh, the next thing you do is you run a sudo bash command to elevate security and a sudo s command. Then you do a yum install bind dns utils. 
these commands are in my web, uh, in my web blog when I uh, when I post this. But basically, the yum install will install bind DNS. That only takes a few seconds. Once that's finished installing, you do a wget command and you specify the RPM file uh, for webmin, which is what we're going to be using to manage bind DNS. You want to do this second so that webmin detects bind during the install. The commands are provided for the latest editions on webmin's website. You do the wget command, quickly goes out, retrieves the RPM file, and if you paste it right in and hit enter, it will actually give you the RPM installation um, command immediately thereafter. So there it is, right there. Uh, you press enter on that, it installs within a few seconds, and you have to set a root password. Amazon EC2 machines do not have a root password set. All you do is change directory over to user libexec webmin and run the change pass pl script uh, with a new password. And I'm using a very insecure password here, literally the word password. Uh, please don't do anything like that. Use something truly secure. A and that gets you through. That basically installs everything that you need up to that point. Um, once you do that, you open up your web browser and you go to https colon slash slash your domain name or your IP address of the machine colon 10,000 because that is the port that webmin runs on and log in using root and the password you've, you've specified. So with that behind us, we actually want to expand others and go to file manager and we need to do one more thing to bind DNS to truly make this ready. The Java base stuff fires up, you get the file manager and you're going to browse over to the etc directory. Once you're in etc, scroll down, look for named.conf, and either rename it or delete it. That is the configuration file for DNS. The reason we're getting rid of it is because uh, by default, when you install it this way, the DNS server will be uh, only listening to local requests, and we don't want that. We want this thing to be listening to uh, from the outside, in other words, be a public DNS server. So uh, we're going to do that, and then click over to bind DNS, and we get a setup wizard, and our choice is set up as an internet name server and download root server information. That is what we want. So we hit the create primary config file and it fires it up. Right then and there we can actually stop bind DNS. And um, for whatever reason, we're actually missing a key file that's going to be integral in a little bit. So I'm going to bring up the terminal window and actually create it. Again, just like everything we've done so far, this is really easy. All we need to do is cd to the etc directory and do rndc dash conf gen space dash a. This command takes a few seconds to run. It generates um, the necessary key file for uh, the DNS server. And then all we need to do afterwards is specify security on that file. And I will have you know that the process to generate this key file does take uh, maybe even a couple of minutes at times, so absolutely be patient with it. Once it's finished, do a chown named slash etc slash rndc dot key and press enter. That takes care of that and we can move the terminal window out of the way. At this point, uh, we're pretty much ready to use the GUI. So the rest is pretty simple. The very first thing we're going to do to configure is go to forwarding and transfers. And we're going to forward out any requests that we're not responsible for out to Google. That is my choice. You don't have to use those DNS servers. You can use whatever you want. I find this to be particularly convenient and simple. Then I'm going to go to addresses and topology. I'm going to switch ports and addresses to listed below. I'm going to change the port to 53 which is the default, but we want to select it anyways. And for addresses, I'm actually going to use the phrase any. Any is this particular uh, type of variable that is used by BindDNS to obviously use any IP address. Uh, moreover, I'm going to allow recursive queries from any. And for the source IP address for transfers, I'm going to choose closest IP as the, uh, as the option. And I'm going to hit save. I'm also going to go to module config. Scroll down and look for the slave masters default setting.
and I'm going to put in the Zerigo uh, DNS master that I was given uh, during the Zerigo configuration and hit save. At this stage I'm going to start bind DNS and apply configuration and stop it as well only to start it one more time and the reason I'm doing this is I'm looking for any particularly um, odd behaviors or errors that might happen during setup. So now we're ready for this DNS server to actually fulfill a slave role and this part is pretty straightforward. Under the existing DNS zones we're going to create a slave zone we're going to put in the domain that we're going to slave out and because we've already set the default the master server is already selected for us I will hit create. Notice how all the values are set to zero that is because it has not pulled any information in. We are going to test zone transfer and we should immediately see more than two records come over. I will warn you that if you see two you probably did something wrong during the config it's very unusual for that to happen and it will if uh, one of the values under addresses um, is not set correctly. 17 is all I have for this particular domain. I'm going to hit apply zone and immediately we'll actually see the results. Now let's go ahead and test. I did promise you we wouldn't use terminal anymore but for testing it's just too easy. I'm going to bring up the terminal window type in dig at localhost macbento.com which is our test domain and press enter. Immediately all of the zones come back to us. Now we're going to do the same test from the outside. I'm going to bring up a terminal window that is not uh, SSH'd into the server. Do a dig at and put in the demo.dns.techbento.com which is the outside DNS server uh, address for this machine and again ask it for uh, macbento.com records. Voila, we have a result. That means our system is working. So just to review, what we've done so far is we went into EC2, we created a security group that allowed port 22, port 53 TCP and UDP, port 10,000 for webmin, and uh, port 22 for SSH. We then created an instance and we connected it to it via SSH. Once we were connected, we installed um, the DNS utilities. We then followed and downloaded and installed webmin logged in, made a few configuration changes, and configured bind DNS. Um, among there, one of the steps I obviously missed in this uh, re uh, recap is when we went to Zerigo and actually turned on the feature on this particular domain and retrieved some vital information. That's all you need. Now I'd strongly recommend at this stage to read about D uh, bind DNS and how to strengthen it. Uh, you're obviously susceptible to attacks the same way Zerigo is and probably a lot more if you're running a single DNS instance. Um, and finally, once you figure out the glue records piece, you can specify this DNS server as uh, your tertiary or whatever DNS uh, server on your domains and do that for each one of those. And of course, if Zerigo does have another outage in the future, your DNS server will take over. Keep in mind, bind DNS does not fulfill all of the roles like redirects and some of the special things that Zerigo is able to do for you. So you would be um, hurting a little bit, but you'd certainly be up. Thank you for your attention, and if you do need any further help, obviously we're here, uh, we're here for that. Um, we're available via phone, via our website at www.techbento.com, uh, or via email, and to email us, visit our website and click on the support and sales link. Thank you.